Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So for this week we're planning out the week of April 20th through April 26th. Um, this is my birthday week and I'm low-key kind of excited for it to be birthday while sheltering in place because I can have a 24-hour movie marathon and no one can judge me because I'm gonna stay home anyways. Um, so that's why I'm using this Harry Potter kit. It's like supposed to be a lovey-dovey almost Valentine's Day Harry Potter kit but I can give two chetos because this is super cute like actually one of my favorite kits from Creativity and Ink. Um, so the kit does come with like this half sheet of ombre heart checklists and then these are these super gorgeous full boxes just like hoping that you guys can see how beautiful this is so it has i'm gonna go into super detail just because i love angela's shop and everything that she comes out with is so gorgeous if you love anything magical whether it be harry potter magic or disney magic she is your girl she uses so many different types of arts she draws them i believe she either she hand draws them pretty sure she's the one that draws them um but she has like exclusive art kits and then also she'll use art that everybody else uses but turn it into like a magical kit i don't know what she does but it always comes out super beautiful um so this full box has harry ron and draco and then a bracelet with like the deathly hello symbol a heart and then the scar um, and then those scattered with Harry's glasses and a couple of little stars, a book with what I believe are like happy planner discs, um, and then the castle and always, a potion, a quill, and then um, like a letter. Um, I believe she said this is supposed to be your acceptance letter, which I think is so cute. And then like the other confetti, like almost a mirrored version of that one over here, um, a potion bottle with little like love hearts and little, I almost said like, what are they called? Like tarot cards um but i don't think that's what this is um and then hermione luna and Ginny. and i love that she included luna luna is my favorite character i am a ravenclaw um, i almost pulled out my ravenclaw mug but it doesn't have anything inside but it's way too far for me to get it um but i just love what angela did with this kit it's so cute and i also think it's so balanced like there's two of those there's two of those there's i would say like those two are the same and these two are the same and then this one's kind of like the outlier but it's still kind of cute um but yeah so those are the full boxes and then this is the like boxes sheet um so there's the like little squared boxes the like nine ish quarter boxes like 12 ish other quarter boxes different quarter boxes and then half boxes um and i do like that there's a variety of patterned and non-patterned so you can like use all the patterned ones now and then use the like solid ones for later um, and then this is the like sampler page. So it has the icons, the scripts, weekend banner, two flags, three third boxes, three um, habit trackers, to do headers, a checklist, and a weekly ombre. And then this is so cute. It's the bottom washi for the kit, um, headers, and then foiled little like quarter boxes, built do. And then I did pick up the glitter headers all the cart. They are so stunning. So I'm gonna have an issue with picking between these or those or the two headers. Um, we're gonna find out. And then I did pull in this silver wiggle from Scribble Prints Co. I got this in the like, um, one of the giant D stash bags that she had, but I believe this is from her advent calendar of 2019. I could be wrong. Someone please correct me in the comments down below, but it has the simplified line bow on this super gorgeous like pink and gray and like white background and then the date covers flags and bows icons and then bottom washi so i'm gonna have a little bit of a struggle bus trying to decide what date covers what headers what bottom washi all that stuff to do i probably should have pulled this out ahead of time um, and i'm also going to be pulling in these silver bougie boxes like confetti overlay tape hopefully i can roll one out for you from rose colored days so that's just what it looks like it's just a full-on confetti overlay box um just because since this is the week of my birthday i did want to make this extra magical beautiful gorgeous all that fun stuff um and if you guys haven't checked out creativity and ink i highly 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 recommend you check her out um she is honestly probably I shouldn't say probably she's honestly my favorite shop for kits just because they're all super foiled super affordable and it's just the perfect blend of like white space some white space no white space type spreads so definitely 10 out of 10 recommend checking her out let's go ahead and get started with the rest of the video 
Well, thank you so much, live action Stephanie, for that beautiful introduction into voiceover me. Um, so really quickly, I did want to say my head is going to pop up in this video like 500 different times. So apologize for that if that's not your cup of tea and if you haven't noticed it yet. Like, obviously it doesn't matter because you probably won't notice it later. But if you did notice it and you're going to notice it now and you're going to get really annoyed by that, just swipe out. Don't look at this. Don't watch. Don't look at me. Hopefully you guys get the Mean Girls reference for that one. But as per usual, I have absolutely nothing to say for this voiceover because I am very much on that train of, I don't really want to talk about the stickers. You can look at the stickers, but mostly just, you know, listen to rambly story time. And I feel like a lot of people have gotten kind of into that boat as well, just because like Rachel of Gathered Plans, her most recent plan with me was her just talking about like random questions that she was asked in a Q&A on Instagram. Also, Laura of Laura Lee Plans did the same thing um, for her most recent plan with me. I wasn't, you know, smart enough and I didn't think in advance enough to ask for questions on Instagram. So I literally just Googled like random questions to ask people. So we're going to go through that. And if you guys have any random type questions that you don't mind asking me, you want to know the answer to, any of that stuff, go ahead and just leave a comment down below. Just because I am very much so on the train of questions that literally no, I don't want to say no sane human being, but no sane human being ever thinks of asking. My favorite example is from the podcast My Favorite Murder. Somebody asked, would you rather be one giant hot dog or three small hot dogs? And I am definitely on that board of questions to ask. The first question, again, I just googled all these so I don't know who came up with these, um, but the first question is, if you had to work but didn't need the money, what would you choose to do? Um, and really quickly before I answer that, you might hear my pen just shaking randomly because I do need to hold something while I am, you know, just talking. Instead of just sitting still, I have to have something in my hands and talk with my hands. So you might hear this pen clicking and clacking around, all that stuff. But really quickly, back to the question. Um, if you had to work but didn't need the money, what would you choose to do? So this might sound kind of lame, kind of weird. Sorry for my head being right there. But I always thought it would be really cool to open up like a store, boutique -y fashion type, I don't even know, I was going to say Louis Vuitton store, but I don't even know what the inside of those look like. Um, but just, you know, a general clothing store, but make it the opposite of a, like, or make it the most general clothing store there is. Like there is no male clothes, female clothes, everything is super gender neutral. It's all like, I guess, like springy fall clothes, very transitional, very neutral type of store, but also very body positive. So instead of having like small, medium, large, you have like loving something that starts with an M and something that starts with an S. Like just joyful, adventurous, cute little like adjectives for the sizes instead of actually having sizes because your size and your measurements any of that stuff do not define who you are as a human being your actions do so I think that we need a store <laughs> to reflect that and be on that boat because I am a very I don't want to say I'm a body positive person because I feel like sometimes I say things that are very anti body positive um but for the most part I do try to you know be respectful human that tries to emphasize people should embrace all of them even the parts they don't like we should all learn to love um I really didn't need to go on that giant tangent for this but that's what I would do if I didn't need to work I could spend all the money in the world because I was you know economically a-okay -okay. I would start a clothing store that was body positive gender neutral anybody can shop there Everything looks beautiful and gorgeous on anybody, any gender, any body type, any of that stuff. So that's what I would do. If you were home on a rainy Sunday afternoon, what movie would you most want to see on television? So this is probably, I don't want to say controversial, <laughs> but my favorite movie of all time is the Jim Carrey live action The Grinch. I think it's an amazing movie. Christmas is, you know, the best time of the year, even though where I'm at, there is no such thing as a white Christmas. It's like 100 degrees 
in Christmas time. Not really, but you know, figuratively in my mind, it is a 100 degree Christmas every single time. But Christmas is always super fun because everybody laughs and gets together and just all the joyful things the like season of giving I feel like that's when people are the most like oh pass it forward let me pay for the person behind me at Starbucks type thing um and the Grinch is just probably I shouldn't say just probably the Grinch is the best Christmas movie of all time at me I don't care it is the best Christmas movie ever but the Jim Carrey Grinch is a the best Christmas movie but also the just the best movie in general again at me I don't care it's great for kids, it has parts that are great for the parents and the adults in the room. It's funny, it's sweet, it's sentimental. Like, it's every beautiful thing. Ugh, sorry, that was my phone. It's every beautiful thing that anybody needs in their lives. Just saying, at me. If you want to have a conversation about this, leave it in the comments down below. Again, the best movie ever. Um, but yeah, that's a movie I would want to watch on a Sunday afternoon. Is the Jim Carrey The Grinch. Also, the part, I'll try to put the gift thing in the corner down below. Last time I absolutely failed at that, but the part where he's like scaring her, he's like, bleh, bleh, and he's like, you know, trying to come at her again. I'll try to put the gift because I don't do the sound right, but that's probably my favorite scene. Also, the scene where he's in the tiny car and he's driving and he hits the fire hydrant and it explodes. That part's really cute too. Um, no one needed to know that I like those parts of the movie, but I'm gonna put this in here anyways. Um, let's see. Where do you not mind waiting? The, like, reasoning, I guess, is in some places the waiting is the best part. I was gonna say, I don't mind waiting at Starbucks just because when I'm inside of Starbucks, not right now, after all this is over, when I go inside of Starbucks, um, it's probably the only place that I don't get anxious, A, when I'm by myself, but also B, if I'm waiting, like, for my drink or my food or whatever it is that I'm going to be waiting for. I know that's not necessarily the question. The question is more like, an, oh, I don't mind waiting at the movies because I'm excited to watch the movie. Like, no, like I don't mind waiting at Starbucks because it's probably the only place that I won't cry for being by myself. Um, that's one thing that, you know, we need to work on. Yeah. So next question. If you could lose or if you could close one fast food chain due to disgusting food, what would you pick? And I would pick Wendy's because... Wendy's is actually disgusting and who wants a square burger? You can't have a square burger. They don't cook right. I actually don't know if they cook right or not, but if you get the The Office reference with the pancakes, you are my new favorite human being. Um, but yeah, Wendy's is just gross. Granted, I haven't had it in like many, many moons, but actually though, Wendy's is disgusting. So this one's kind of a weird one. <laughs> And the question is, what would be the best thing about not having a sense of smell? And this is probably way too, like, I don't know if TMI is the right thing, but the best thing about not having a sense of smell is that you can use any restroom after any human being and it won't smell like actual shit because that's not the funnest thing on the planet. Granted, everybody's poop stink, so, you know, like you can't act like your poop doesn't stink because literally everybody's does but that would be the best thing about not having a sense of smell is that you know you can use literally any restroom that you want um the worst thing about not having a sense of smell is that all your food would probably taste really gross just because you know you taste your food by not i don't want to say you taste your food by smelling it but smelling it enhances the taste of your food that's why when you cook your own food it doesn't taste as good as when somebody else makes it just because as you're cooking it you're obviously like inhaling all of the smells that are there so you end up kind of getting desensitized to the taste when it comes down to eating it or whatever so it's probably the worst thing about not having a sense of smell is that everything's going to taste bad also i'm pretty sure that like when you have a cold food always tastes bad because you can't smell because your nose is plugged so again if smelling enhances the tasting part because it all goes like the smelling not smelling but, like the food particles all go into your nose and you know into the same general area um that's yeah I don't even know where I'm going but anyways best thing when not having smell is you can use restroom after anybody's poo poo's worst thing is that your food's probably gonna taste really really bland like if you have a cold the entire time um so we're gonna end on this question just because I apparently no longer have a train of thought um but if you guys have any better questions leave them in the comments down below for the record i would pick three small hot dogs not one giant hot dog just because you can stack them all up to be tall or also just be on your own to go somewhere small um 
but yeah leave me any questions you guys may have in the comments down below hopefully the next voiceover is not as hot mess of an express as this one is it probably will be all of my voiceovers will literally be hot mess expresses but that's okay because we don't mind a hot mess express on steroids i'm gonna put like I'm going to delete all of the ums and put music for the rest of it. There's probably going to be like five minutes in between the voiceover and the live action me. But let's just play some music and then get on to live action me for the rest of this video. everything for this spread it came out super gorgeous super sparkly hopefully you guys can see all of the <laughs> silver that there is going on in all of this i went ahead and finished this spread listening to potterless podcast just because i did finish the um mfm minisode at the beginning of this and everything um but yeah it came out super cute i used these silver bougie boxes from rose colored days so hopefully you can see some of the like twinkly bits coming out throughout all of it and then again the tweezers that I used are from Perfect Prince Co. and then this is like the leftovers of everything that I used so this is all I have left of the glitter headers the like half ombre heart checklists I have four full boxes I should probably show you guys I don't even know if I was in frame because I'm trying to show the spread and this at the same time it's fine um and then this is all I have left of like the boxes so there's like literally four boxes left um, and then all from like the sampler type page. I have one strip of bottom washi and one bill do left. And then this is everything I have left from the wiggle. So I did use a couple of the icons, um, some of the bows to mark just like work on days that I work. Um, and then the like simplified bow headers. I just sprinkled like some of them throughout the spread. And then I used the bow 15 millimeter on the bottom and then I didn't use any of the date covers just because I figured when I do this spread next year around like February-ish probably um I would just pull these guys in to do like a leftover spread and then the date dots that I used are from Scribble Prints Co. I used a couple of these like white icons I think I used one um somewhere in this spread but these are from Scribble Prints Co. from like leftover wiggles the half cut headers they used in the sidebar are from scroll prints co should turn these upside down if i decided to do that from the beginning um some of the icons that i pulled in like did i pull any in did i pull any in yeah so like this camera are from creativity and ink along with like i just cut it up instead of using half cut headers around the currently reading from planner esque just because i figured this would be a lot easier than trying to stack a bunch of um half cut headers so these are just like bougie boxes from creativity and ink and then i used the memory plan script and the work scripts from designing san diego this is from planner ask again along with the currently reading box the happy birthday scripts are from planner girl stickers this is i believe the only thing that i ordered from her and I can't remember if she's still a shop, but if they are, I will for sure leave them down below. And then the coffee cups that I used are from Let's Make It Sparkle. I knew I wasn't going to have enough, like, labels and stuff. So I did just pull in a bunch of random pinks from, like, Scribble Prints Co. Leftover ones. So any of the pink little things are from those sheets. And then these scripts that I used for PR Post, the little mini checklist, and the Cold Brew Customs are all from RG Paper Designs. 10 out of 10, recommend her shop. Um, she did come out with a third custom script. I don't have them with me because she literally came out with it yesterday. Um, like, a different format. So now there's, like, a block one. A, like thick curvy one and a like skinny curvy one 
Um, and you can use Stephanie 25 for 25% off of Rachel's shop. As always, as per usual, I will link her down below. Um, but yeah, that is everything for this plan with me. And it came out super duper gorgeous. And then if you haven't seen last week's, last week was also silver foil, but using Perfect Prince Co. And I do like that there's such a big contrast between the colors and everything. Um, and then for next week, I'm going to be using uh, this kit from RG Paper Designs. So if you haven't, we plan our twins, use it for the following week, which is this one, the 27th through the 3rd. Um, but yeah, that is everything for this spread. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.